Joyce Fernandes again. This is an evening video, but it just occurred to me that I never did tell you what to do with those chapters that are in the folders. You see the discussion boards and you know what the voice thread will be to capture your a voice um, when you do your video for your introduction. And that's how all our presentations are going to be captured. The in the news, the informative, the persuasive, and the personal experience brief opinion. You're going to put them into voice thread. That way we can share them. Your peers can make comments. And then there will be, after every presentation, there will be a journal to do. And I will give you more information about that when we're time for the journal. But what about those chapters? Not, not just one student, but a few students wrote to me saying, what are we supposed to do with those chapters? And it's an excellent question. I never told you. And I know for some people, you've had the experience of outlining chapters or answering questions. And you're thinking, well, that's what I must want you to do. But that's not what I want you to do. Those chapters are really for background of the, the field of communication and specifically public speaking. It's really for your strength or edification as a student. Also, for you to be connected to when I start talking about some of those terms that you will see, like in chapter one, when you see the communication model on page four, and they show the two communicators, and they talk about the relationship between communicator one, let's say in this case, the speaker and communicator to the listener, and they talk about sending over the message, and the channel for us is pure air, and how the receiver, the listener, same person, right, is going to be decoding. So you encode as the speaker, you make your thoughts about how you want your message to be. You know, what words you use, what emotions you use, how your voice is going to be. That's all a choice. You send it over to your listener, and they're going to decode. And that, and I love that um, model that they put because they make the perfect, perfect point that even though I think I'm saying something clearly and I think I know what I'm saying, sometimes you don't realize you don't come across the way you intended because you're not in charge of the listening. That's another human being, and they have their own worldview and their own point of view. So when you see that those bubbles all around the head, and they're saying, hey, it all depends who they are and what their background is. So communication is not 100%. It never will be. And then that circle, they don't really see it as a circle, but I do. It's, it then is it's continued, and it meets up because I am encoding a message, sending it, you are receiving it, decoding, and then I get back feedback. Now, because this is video, it's not immediate feedback like it would be in a live public speaking situation. But still, you do get feedback. And when I, uh, when I receive some emails saying, what do we do with those chapters? I'm like, yeah, that's feedback. So anyway, chapter one was all in the communication model. Chapter two is the history of public speaking. And I really want you to know that where the field of communication, the discipline falls in. And it's um, a ancient history, really. And it comes from the behavioral and social sciences. And one of my favorite historians in that chapter is Cicero. And Cicero was considered to be the original spin doctor. And when we talk about persuasion, we're going to talk about Cicero, how he would spin a tail, and Aristotle too. So that's just background information. So I give them to you like one or two chapters every week as I, I think they make sense for that week because we're beginning and for maybe some of the information I'll be giving you on some of the video uh, on my own personal videos to you that you'll understand if I use some terms and to help you put things in perspective. So it's really edification, strengthening you up. And the chapters, if you want to know how many chapters I, I assigned, it's not going to be all of them. And I wrote them down. There are 13 chapters. Chapter 1, Chapter 2, Chapter 3, Chapter 4, Chapter 5, and then I skip to Chapter 9, and then 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So I miss a few in the middle. So it's almost all the chapters, and I give you a word bank attached to each chapter called the focal points, right? So those focal points, I'm going to talk to the, about those in a minute, but if I were you, I'd say, okay, 
I'm going to do my discussion board. I'm going to get ready for the next, either my introduction or my next speech. I know that's all coming. Uh, if there's a journal, because I've just had a, a speech to do, I'll, I'll do my journal for my review of my peers. So what about these chapters? Well, I would open them up and I would read through them. And first I would look at those focal points and say, oh, these are the words she wants me to be paying attention to. And at the back of every chapter, there's a glossary. And look at how they, they define them. And I think you're going to find, as you read enough of these chapters, that some of these words and terms are familiar to you from your English classes, learning about writing. Because we are orators. We're doing or we're working on our oratory skills, right? Our, com our oral communication skills. But when you took all those years of English classes, you were working on your writing skills. But there's so many things that overlap, especially considering your, when you're writing, you're considering your reader. And when you're speaking, you're considering your audience or your listener. So, so many of the terms and the concepts are very, very similar. They really are. And also behavioral and social sciences. So you might see some things that remind you of your psychology class or your a shared discipline and an overlapping discipline communication is. It really is. And this class, like any communication class, in the broader category is a humanities. So it shouldn't be hard reading. It's not, it's not like STEM where you're memorizing or you have to put formulas together. I hope it's light. And if I were you, I would look over the voc vocal points, say, okay, I start reading the chapter and take in what you can, like what makes sense to you. I, would t I, I think it's a good read. I love in chapter one when they talk about the Nixon-Kennedy debates, which really started the modern public speaking. Because prior to that, public speaking was very stiff and very specific. And after that debate, it was clear that personality and visual really mattered. And then much more research was done in what is the impact of the visual and what's the impact of emotions and rapport with your audience. And they saw quite a bit. Up until that point, they thought it was all content. But the effectiveness of a presentation isn't all content. It has to do with the delivery. In fact, when I think Sam Morabian, I know that Morabian was his last name, Dr. Morabian, who wrote a book in the 60s called Silent Messages, he was one of the first to do the research on this. And he said that for every presentation, it, is, it, is, um, it, it, comes in for, it comes in a block of formula of three. It's divided into three. And it's divided by the verbal, which are the words themselves, the vocal, the sound of the voice, and then the visual. And he, he said this, after studying and um, studying and studying, studying audiences and presentations, he said, once trust and credibility is established, between the, um, the source and the receiver, between the speaker and the listener, like you believe I'm, I'm telling you the truth, that's gonna be established. The initial effect of, the, of a presentation is only 7% on the words themselves, 38% on the vocal, and 55% on the visual. Mm -hmm. So I know I'm, I'm going um, around the mulberry bush trying to tell you why I want you to read these chapters, but I want you to have the background is I think it's important. Some of you will be going into higher level communication classes or maybe you're going into psychology someday or business. And some of these terms and concepts will come back to you. So they may be new, they may be a repetitive. I don't, it's, it's a, not a textbook that's difficult to read, so I would read through. And the end of all that is, is the final exam is created from vocabulary words that come from those chapters, those focal point words. You get about 200 from the 13 chapters that I, uh, I assign throughout the semester. It's about 200 words. And I quiz you on 50 of them. And the formula for the, for the final exam is 50 questions, two points apiece. And you'll get the definition, and then you'll get a choice. And there are two, of the, two out of 50, two of the questions are multiple answer. And it's clearly marked, this is multiple answer. And 48 are just... Um, direct one just you know multiple choice so you would get you would get a definition then you then i give you like three or four choices and then you pick the one so what i try to do 
is as I'm doing this right now, I try to use vocabulary that I know is on that final exam so that it's rep repeated. So I would not expect you to read the chapter and outline the chapter. That's not necessary in this class or answer even questions. But look at those vocabulary words, not to memorize because I would never want you to memorize over 200 words that you know, it's not worth it, but be familiar with them. And when the final exam is open to you, it'll be opened in April and you'll have at least two weeks to do it. And the way it's designed is that you don't have to do all 50 questions at a time. You can keep going back to it. You just save. You just keep saving your answers. And you don't, um, you don't, you don't finish your exam until you're comfortable with it. So you can do it over two weeks and then you submit it. And what many students said to me, it was kind of like a treasure hunt because they, they, didn't, they, didn't, they wanted to make sure they were right. So it did force them into going back into these chapters and reading some more. So it's all edification. It's all really good for your brain and for your education. And you can do it. But they might do five a night and they would see the definition and they'd see some of the words. They'd say, I think it's that one. And they'd go back to make sure. And then they'd come back again. So they'd go back and forth, back and forth. So it wasn't, it wasn't easy in the sense that there was work involved, but it is with ease. So those vocabulary are going to be what the final exam is going to be on. And the, then the chapters, be relaxed about them, be familiar with those words, enjoy some of the content, maybe some new things you've never thought of before, some things you have, but it's really to give you background. Even if this was a face-to-face -face class, I don't lecture from that. Um, an entire time in the face-to-face -face class is I'm um, talking about concepts that come from the videos and and the presentations. You know, you can just imagine how much time it is to get through classes of these presentations. It can take sometimes two weeks of class time to get through one category of speeches. So that's the bulk of our time, and that becomes our course material. So anyway, relax about those chapters. I do want you to read them. I And I gave you the 13. I don't expect you to read all 13. In fact, that's not even good for you. It's better to mull things over, read a little bit at a time, and just take the time to browse and know that nothing is going to be asked of you from those chapters until the final exam, and you will have time. So let's just say you never read any of the chapters, and you don't have any time for that, and you're not going to do it, and then you get the final exam, and now you're faced with the 50 vocabulary, and then you go back in, that's fine too. You know, as a student, you have to learn what matters what matters to you at the moment. I don't know how many other classes you're taking and there's only so many hours in the day and you get tired. So you have to triage things as you go along. But I just want you to know that those chapters were not meant to be outlined or not meant to be answered questions. They're really meant to give you a good background and help you understand some of the things I'll be saying in the future, some of what the, some of what the, what the um, YouTube videos will be saying. I know I look a fright. I am I'm going to be 65 at the end of this month. It's uh, shows in my face. But I had like five emails today asking me about those chapters and when that happens, I know I haven't done a good job explaining anything. So you deserve more. I usually give a video at least once a week and um you sometimes talk about the um YouTube videos about the upcoming speeches. So be prepared to see me again, and hopefully um, it's not, I think this is like 9 o'clock at night. I'm ready for bed, which is, you're pro probably just starting off your night, you young people. All right, I'm going to love and leave you, and uh, I hope that answers the questions, what to do with those chapters. Just read them. Be familiar with the vocabulary. You don't have to be memorizing anything, but they'll come back to you. At least 50 of those words will at the end of the semester. All right, ciao, Bella. Hope you're having a good night.